Dick Tracy vs. Q-Ball is the second of four films produced by RKO in the 1940s featuring Chester Gould's iconic comic strip detective, Dick Tracy. It also marks the second and final time Morgan Conway would play the titular square jaw hero. It differs greatly and is a marked improvement from the initial film in the series, simply titled Dick Tracy, and effectively sets the tone and formula for the next two movies. In short, this is solid and classic B-movie filmmaking at its finest. Dick Tracy gets involved with a case of stolen diamonds and murder when the bald-faced ex-con Q-Wall returns to town. But when partners attempt to double-cross the arch-criminal, the body count rises and Q-Ball begins to strangle anyone who gets in his way while trying to fence the stolen goods, putting him on a collision course with our hero detective. I like this movie a lot. In fact, it's probably my favorite of the four RKO Tracy films, narrowly topping the series' most famous entry, Dick Tracy Meets Gruesome. And this is for a number of reasons. One of the main reasons I like this film is the way it effectively utilizes and integrates the supporting cast members from the Dick Tracy comics. These characters, like Tess Trueheart and Vitamin Flintheart, get to do a lot more in cue ball than in any of the other RKO films. For example, Tess, as played by the wonderful Ann Jeffries, gets to go undercover as a potential buyer for the stolen diamonds, and Vitamin, the eccentric, aging actor friend of Tracy, contributes by accruing some valuable intel. By getting everybody into the act, it really allows for a more impactful story and helps build the world around our title character. Even Junior, in his brief role in the film, helps provide a useful and vital informative clue. However, that doesn't mean that this movie is perfect. Actually, there's one major complaint that I have with not just this movie, but the series overall, and that's the handling of the villains. Dick Tracy's popularity as a comic strip was predicated on a lot of different factors, but one of the strip's biggest assets was its rogues gallery of villains. For all four of the RKO films, original villains were created instead of utilizing the classic gangsters from the comics. Actually, the only time we ever get to see the Tracy rogues is in the title cards at the beginning of the movie. As the villain of the piece, Q-Ball is a memorable one, as played by Dick Wessel. He's a menacing and violent arch-criminal whose preferred method of murder is strangulation. It's an effectively suspenseful and terrifying weapon for the movie, but again, one common thread among Tracy villains in this RKO series is that the supposed big bad of the movie, in this case Q-Ball, usually ends up being a hired henchman and a cog in the wheel of other more mundane criminals. These characters should be the mastermind or central antagonist. The film still works and is a lot of fun, but it's worth pointing this out, as well as the way the villains are usually disposed of at the end of the movies, which, withholding spoilers, is rather unsatisfying. I also have to mention Morgan Conway, who plays our hero. It's a tricky situation because Conway really leaves me in conflict when comparing him to his predecessor and eventual successor, Ralph Byrd, considered by many to be the definitive screen Dick Tracy. They're really very different in just about every way, from physical appearance to personality, but somehow both feel true to the Dick Tracy character. Conway renders a more darker and gritty version of the character compared to the more light-hearted and good-natured Bird. For me, both actors have their strengths and weaknesses in the role, but at the same time seem right, and I really do appreciate both of them. Dick Tracy vs. Q-Ball remains my favorite of the original four Dick Tracy RKO films. It's well plotted with likable characters, a memorable villain, twists and turns, suspense, humor, and a more full circle utilization of the supporting cast. It's great B-movie fun, and at only about one hour in length is definitely worth a watch. It's in the public domain and readily available pretty much anywhere to see. Thanks for watching this review. If you liked what you saw here, please comment below, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel.